So we're going to talk about like, how do you choose a financial advisor? And there's a lot out there. How does somebody even start? I'm Beth Hockberger, CPA, CGMA. This channel aims to educate you on tax, tech, crypto, and finance related news. Come learn how to grow and keep your wealth. And welcome to Finance Friday. Today I have Sarah Brogley, CFP, Certified Financial Planner. I'll give you a little bio background on her. So Sarah, from an early age, has a passion for learning as much as possible so she can best help others, which especially within a male-dominated industry, and put a pin on that because I think we have to talk about that too, um, being well-educated is important to her. Sarah takes pride in applying her extensive knowledge to be a warm, guiding light through clients' every thought or concern, giving them more confidence to spend their valued time doing what they love. Sarah has been with Raymond James since 2015, starting on an independent all-female team uh, in her own in her hometown of Jacksonville, Florida, before relocating to join the Boca Raton office in 2020. She earned a bachelor's degree in financial services from the University of North Florida, specifically tailored towards financial planning for individuals and small business owners. Those are my people. <laughs> uh, you're just an awesome person. Oh, and you have two doggies. Two Can't doggies, leave. the best part, the two <laughs> doggies, the one of part. them's walking around behind me. So he'll make <laughs> a guest appearance, hopefully. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, so we're going to talk about like, how do you choose a financial advisor? And there's a lot out there, right? How does somebody even start? Where yeah. Do you start? Yeah. I think, um, I think this interest came from when I moved from Jacksonville to South Florida, to join a Raymond James office, I took about four months to find a really good fit. I was being very picky as a young female in finance. Um, I was introduced to a ton of offices who wanted to hire me on as an assistant, a sales assistant. And um, that would be taking a step back because I'd been an advisor already for a couple of years. And so I said, no. So I looked for a long time and each advisor I talked to did something different with their practice. They had different personalities, they targeted different markets, they ran their business different ways, they specialized in different things. So I think that's kind of what sparked it for me because advisors never really have to choose another advisor, but in this moving <laughs> process I did, and there are so many true, people who um, have so many options. You mentioned as a CPA, you know a ton of advisors and how yeah. do you find the best fit for someone? And so that's kind of where it sparked my interest. Um, there, there he is. Uh, <laughs> waiting patiently to go outside. Um, but yeah, so that's where my interest came from. And I got to talking, I actually did a speech at the chamber about this. And um, there are so many things that come into meeting an advisor. So one thing I always suggest is when you do meet with an advisor, no matter how you've got connected with them, ask them something ask them to explain something that you don't already know. Mm. Because in that process, if you're talking to someone and they speak a ton of financial jargon or over your head, the mm. they're putting their best foot forward in the sales process. So they are probably always going to speak over your head. And it's kind of a precursor to what your relationship that's would a be. Good point. That's a really good point. I wouldn't have thought of that, but yeah, idea. ask them questions. Yeah. That's what they're there for. I think some advisors who have been doing it for 30 plus years at some point lose touch with the simplicity of financial planning and what the purpose is. And so if they can explain it in a way you understand, it's a green light. Um, another thing I think that's really important is who do you like to spend time with? Um, not that your advisor has to be your best friend, although I tend to love all of my clients, but um, if it's someone you'd like to spend time with and can trust and be candid with, you're going to enjoy the process a lot more as opposed to feeling. Yeah, that's up. huge, right? Because for a lot of people, it's like a scary thing. Like, I don't yes. understand necessarily how this works. And now I don't really like this person. And yep. if you kind of associate like the bad feeling with the already yeah. financial problem, oh, that doesn't sound, yeah. that doesn't sound even like it's like going to work. Even like a stuffy office, um, or I mean, I know I'm wearing like a blazer, but I'm, you don't have to be, it's not a stuffy process. You know, we joke, we have fun. It's, it's a very um, integrated process together. And so if you like them, that's good news. 
Another thing um, that I was thinking of is logistics. Are they local? Do you want to meet someone in person? Will you understand it better? Or is it, are you a Zoom person? Because right, I think right, right. it's hard enough to learn in person, let alone over Zoom. Um, and then there are some resources that are available to look up. When I go to look up like a plumber or an electrician, the first thing I do is Google and review their reviews. Yes. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love, I, I, some financial firms, mine specifically does not allow reviews. So I can't oh. have a Google Facebook page with, or a Google page with Sarah did this or this or this. Um, so the alternative to that, have you ever heard of broker check? Yes, I have. Yeah. I don't know that yeah. most people have, but I have. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, some have, some haven't. Broker Check is essentially a website where you can look up the history of your advisor, when they got licensed, what state they're licensed in, and then any client complaints that might have come up over time. Um, yep. So you can see it's kind of like the dirty laundry of, <laughs> of an advisor. And I think you can decipher for yourself the complaint and what that looks like for you. Some of it is maybe just not understanding something completely, which brings it back to, are you in the loop and in yeah. good communication yeah. Yeah. with your person. Um, age, I think a lot of um, advisors historically have been older male. There are more yes. women getting into, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we can talk about that now. <laughs> you want to talk about it now, being I a do. young yeah. female in a male-dominated industry. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and I think some people prefer a man. I. Um, I guess it depends on who you got information from growing up. Maybe if, if it was your dad teaching you or your mom teaching you, do you prefer to work with a man or a woman? And then um, age too. So some people prefer an older advisor for their experience. Some people prefer a younger advisor because they're going to be with them forever if right, you right. want. Um, so really just Hopefully. taking it. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. It's a fluid thing, but um, yeah, just being able to judge. Um, I feel like I'm in the sweet spot of my industry where I have seven years of experience. So, and I was able to shadow my senior advisor and really get involved with that planning process, but I'm not so out of touch maybe with, um, you know, doing it for 30 years and not really understanding right. what's needed now, the technology available, the solutions the technology's, available. Technology's, and that's a big deal, right? Like, you know, what can I do on my phone? Yeah, right, right. And the planning software, the, there's a- Yeah, the software, yeah. Yeah, that's a big deal. being able to know yeah. the ins and outs. And being able to relate to, you know, the last, I don't know, since what, like 2010, has been pretty good, like yeah. economically yeah. speaking, right? It's yeah. been good. So right. there might be younger people now who are just like for the first time, like recession, what? Yeah. <laughs> and kind of like, oh God, you know, what's happening? Like we've never seen this before. Right, so, right. Yeah, you know, I have a- someone who's seen it all or do you want right. someone who's exactly. in it with you at the moment? <laughs> right, who could feel it, right. I could, uh, I had a lady turn me down because of my age, which is fine. It's not a good fit. But um, her concern was that industry experience or the uh, market experience. And I was like, I could read it on a textbook till I'm blue in, a, it blew in the face and know exactly why that happened and what would prevent that from happening again. But yeah, if that if someone's not comfortable with that, it's not a good thing. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I get run into that same thing. Um, you know, older um, clients don't love, we're very technical here, like, yeah. everything's online you know? yeah like no there's no you know come drop off documents I mean sometimes I let people do it but you're not sitting with me and handing me one page at a time while I take everything <laughs> in. like that's just not how we we don't operate like that it's a very old-fashioned you know right. CPA firm experience uh yeah. and we just don't do it so yeah some people can't wrap their heads around various and assorted things so yeah definitely it's a, it's a preference right it's a personal preference and people need to pick what they're comfortable with like goes back to what you were saying in the yeah. beginning yeah. yeah and I think shopping around is a good thing I think if an advice or a prospect and I meet together um I always encourage go see what else is out there also from a service standpoint um I saw one of your finance Fridays talked a little bit about robo advisors 
Oh, which yeah. I think is a, is a great point. I mean, do you want a robo advisor, which is very low fees, if any fee at all, or do you need someone to hold your hand and guide you? It it really depends. I think right. if your situation is complex enough to need that individual with tangible solutions, sure. But a lot of people in my age range, I just say, all right, call me if you have questions, but do this, this, and this, and they're off, you know, they're on their way and, and that's fine. So yeah, that's yeah really it's cool. been really fun. Um, I feel like, I think another thing for people to remember is that an advisor is a salesperson. So they're very good at schmoozing um, to a <laughs> to degree. So I think you can reassess after a year of working with them or, you know, at any time you can make a change. You're not um, loyal to a fault or you don't have to be. And if someone's not a good fit for you anymore, go to someone who is, because yeah. it's going to be a totally uh, different experience for the better. Yeah. And like I tell people, I tell clients all the time, like this might be good now, right? And it yeah. might not be good in the future. We're not married. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I only have one marriage. It's not any that's of you. <laughs> funny. That's yeah. I was actually going to mention it's like dating. So when you meet yeah. an advisor, go meet two or three, see who you really want to, you know, get engaged to. And yeah, you're yeah. not, you can leave at any time. It's not contractual. But also, you know, things change in your life over time, right? Like yeah. who you need at one stage might not be who you need at on yeah. another stage, you know, a big life changes, you know, children's divorces, marriages, yeah. death, like there's a lot of things that can change over time. And it can yeah. change what you need, it can change your relationship with your professionals, who you want, what yeah. you want. So right. Yeah, change. I think you bring up a good point too of um an advisor sees so many people and all of their life changes. So those areas of transition, not that we have any type of um, therapy aspect to it, but to be able oh, to but go we through, do. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, behavioral finance is a thing. Why, you know, so really bringing that human side back into finance of, okay, so you're not doing X, Y, and Z, and you haven't done it over the years. Why is that? Why can, how can we change that to get you on the right track and moving forward? Right. So just being very human because it's not all numbers, spreadsheets, et cetera. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's like, uh, Dave Ramsey, I think says, uh, you know, personal finance, like the math is easy. Yeah. It's the, right. <laughs> it's right. the everything else <laughs> that gets in the way your feelings, yeah. your fears, your thoughts, your whatever conditioning yeah. There's a lot of stuff. And, um, um, I think one more thing about advisors. So I learned this moving down is there are so many different advisors who um, charge differently. So there are typically, I would say mainly three ways an advisor gets paid, which I don't think is talked about enough either. Um, they can either be commission-based business, which means transactionally, if they buy or sell something for you, they get a portion of that fee. Okay. Yeah. Um, Fee-based, which is just a certain percentage of the account assets that they're helping manage. And within fee-based, I mentioned historically, you know, the older male, um, they've all been stockbrokers. You know, stockbrokers are so different than financial planners because a stockbroker will recommend buying, selling, trading but what about everything else? What about if I want to move, should I sell? Should I rent? What about, um, can I retire this year, next year? What about how much does it cost if I unfortunately get Alzheimer's or something like that? So what is that fee and what does it include? I think is a good uh, thing to yeah. ask your advisor. And Absolutely. then um, advisors now can do a flat fee for planning. So you could do similar to an attorney who would charge documents for a will or a trust. They can do a flat fee for a moment in time plan. So let's yeah. look at your picture today. Where do you want to go? What do we have to do to get there? Um, so those are the three main ways advisors get paid. Okay. And that's yeah. definitely, I think, something people don't realize. Yeah. You have these options to work with people in different ways. Yeah. Right. Um. How about like, have you seen like, any like real bad, like red flags? Like, is there anything that somebody should, other than like, oh, I don't really like them, but like something to see and like go run the other direction. 
Um, I guess one, the first thing that I just thought of is um, if you have an advisor who has built good relationships with other professionals, green flag, if you ask your advisor for an accountant recommendation and they give you one name and you call that number and it's disconnected, right? So, <laughs> so you need an advisor who is well-connected and who can recommend an accountant that's a great fit for them or recommend them options so they can now shop an accountant. Um, I think a red flag is an advisor with not a lot of relationships or um, someone who speaks over you. Yeah, I think. That's I love those, both of those amazing, but red flag. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you, like, I think after almost every conversation I have with either a current client or a prospect, yeah. I'm like, have you spoken to X, you know, a business attorney, real estate attorney, estate planning yeah. attorney, financial advisor, life insurance. There's always somebody that needs yeah. something. And the yeah. great thing, like you're saying, you have a, someone with an, uh, an extensive network. We can work together. Yeah. Right. We're yeah. not siloed. It's not like, oh, well, that's the financial planner's problem. And, you know, the no. tax person doesn't get read in. Yeah. It's all together. They're related. Yeah. They're absolutely <laughs> related. Um, I think there was something else I just thought of too with that. Oh, yeah. Um, there are also advisors who have different um, approaches from a overall standpoint. So I just recently met a faith based advisor. I, truly didn't know that existed. So if okay. you're someone who wants to bring that into your finances, there's that. There's advisors who like focus on women empowerment, which I love. Um, <laughs> they're, you know, so there it's not just the, oh, I work with small businesses, retirees and, you know, women. It's it can get more specific. And if your values align with theirs, it's just a really fun relationship. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense on the faith base because if you're like tithing, right? Yeah, yeah. It might it might not necessarily make like financial sense, but if you're like, this is something that's important to me and I want to do it. Yeah. That person's not going to be like, oh, don't do that. That's silly. Why give 10% of your money away, right? Like, right, right, right. It's yeah. Just build it in. It's not a, a value judgment on, in that right. regard. So that's cool, actually. I kind of like that. Yeah, I had no idea um, that that was a thing. So um, I think one more thing, which would be a red flag is um, an advisor who explicitly tells you to do something. I think an advisor should advise and give the information and maybe a suggestion if need be, but an advisor, uh, for example, I've had clients come to me and say, I wanted to sell this at a certain point. My advisor said no. And at the end of the day, was it a good decision or not, not to sell? I don't know, but you can advise all you want, but if you're then making decisions on the client's behalf, it's kind of a, um, um kind of a, a control issue, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that, but it goes back to like, how do they make you feel? Are you comfortable when yeah. you talk to them? And if they're right. dictating to you what you're doing, yeah, yeah. That's a little, yeah. Eh, I don't love it. Yeah. <laughs> I, agree. I agree. I don't love it. Again, we're not married. We are not married. Yep. Don't tell me what to do. We are not married. That should be the not quote. my mom. Yeah. Not my dad. Yep. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, Sarah, and I know you're a big golf enthusiast. Do you want to talk about your, your organization you. a little? Yeah, I am now. Um, I just got into golf earlier this year. Um, when I moved to South Florida in 2020, as you mentioned, everyone golfs and I felt very <laughs> left out. Everyone golfs, they really everyone do. Everyone golfs, yeah, it's a South Florida thing, I guess. But, um, and I wanted to be a part of that. So I have a, a friend in Jacksonville who started a group for, uh, it's a group lesson for women of any skill level. And she uh, asked if I wanted to do one down here. And I said, Hell yeah, because I had I was already feeling like I wasn't involved on the golf standpoint. <clears throat> so that's what we did in April. We started group lessons and it's just an hour lesson wow. um, of, for women of any skill level. We've had 20 to 22 women at our last few lessons. Including um, no level. <laughs> no level, never held a club, will help you. And like I think mini golf is the extent of my golfing experience. <laughs> actually, so Drew taught me this uh, mini golf, like putting is one third of a golf game. You have your oh. long driving, your um, 
I don't know, chipping, I guess, would be like the medium length of distance <laughs> and then putting. So, so you're already half or one third of the way there. So putting is I'm a not good. good. <laughs> <laughs> but I've at least played video. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So you've held a club. You're good. Okay. We call that holding a club. Great. <laughs> yes, holding a club. Putt putt is it. Yeah. So so this group, it's been really fun. I think half the women just come for the food and drink and good time afterwards. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we do an hour lesson and then do happy hour. We meet at Oh, yeah. okay. I can get behind that part. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So that's the that's the group. It's called Legs, Ladies Executive Golf Society. Nice. Where do you guys uh, practice and, and meet and all that? Yeah, we do um, Deer Creek Golf Course, which is in Deerfield. Okay. Uh, and then we meet on the first and third Wednesday every month. The lesson's from 5 to 6 p.m. And then no one's going to tell you to go home, but we stay until about, I don't know, 7.30 or so um, with drinks. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, you might be twisting my arm. I might have to try it. <laughs> it would be fun, yeah. Yeah, it's just a really cool group of women too. And I feel like because totally everyone's in myself. the same. Wait, do we get to wear the outfits? Do you get to yes. wear a golf outfit? Yeah, yep. Amazon. I, I recommend Amazon to everybody. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I feel like that's the fun of it because no one knows what they're doing. I just started in April when we started these lessons. So I'll ask, I'll try to ask all the silly questions up front. Like, what can I wear? What time do I show up? Um, if I have clubs, so some people borrow like friends clubs and oh. then they'll go to the parking lot and like walk the clubs in. Apparently that's what the like loop-de-loop -loop is for. You can drop off oh. your clubs. So we're learning a ton. I am too. It's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny because I literally live a block away from a golf course. Oh my gosh. It's apparently a nice golf course. The Emerald That's Hills funny. Golf Course is supposed to be a nice one from what yeah. I have been told. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't know one way or another. Never even. Considered. I've only been to Deer Creek, so I don't know anything either. <laughs> I don't know. This is what people tell me. It's nice. I just know if I tell my kids that I'm taking up golf, their very first question is going to be, are we buying a golf cart? Oh, <laughs> they have, they have a little obsession with golf carts. Oh, do they? That's funny. You got to get them a little scooter, like a little um, Vespa scooter. Those are good. <laughs> they want a golf cart very badly for whatever reason. I, that is interesting. Well, are they a but again, I was gonna say, are they driving? Um, no, not yet. Right? One of them, one of them has got his license. Okay, but yeah. In Florida, you don't have to be that old to drive here, like 14. Well, I was, I was gonna say, I feel like that want goes away once you start driving cars because it's like, okay, it's the 14 year old that's really obsessed. So I think it's her because it's funny. But we were in New Jersey for a couple of weeks this summer, yeah. and at some point, they made driving golf cart street legal, like all over oh, really? my town. Yeah, oh so gosh. everywhere they're like, look at that one, look at that one, that one's pretty. And we're like, all right, how much does a golf cart cost? I don't know. So they're finding ones that are like, you know, fifteen thousand dollar golf carts. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like to buy car at that point. <laughs> My grandma lives in the villages, um, that retirement community outside of Ocala, and. Oh my gosh, they do like golf cart parades for the ones that look like old cars or the ones that look like boats. Like they go all out with their golf carts. So That's yeah, hysterical. I can only imagine. That's really <laughs> funny that I can't even imagine. All right. So so normally at the end of these, I ask my guests if they have any interesting hobbies, but I think we just talked about the interesting hobby. Yeah. <laughs> anything I else mean, besides golf? <laughs> Or unusual um, talents, anything uh, weird? Um, I guess the only weird thing is I have a ton of brothers and sisters. I always yeah. use that as a crutch. I have four brothers and two sisters. I'm the second. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're a big so, family. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that's my interesting fact. But no, we just we love to take the dogs to the dog park and out on the sandbar to the beach. Um that's that's pretty much it, just being outdoors. Yeah. Have you probably, but have you been to that really nice mini golf in Delray? No, no. no. Where is it? Yeah. I have to go. I haven't been. Okay. So I haven't been in years. Like pre-pandemic okay. was the last time I went, but, and yeah. I would totally go beat you there. 
It was like a botanical garden with like too many Ooh. golf courses and you can call them and they'll bring you drinks. Right to your- <laughs> no, yeah. I, yeah, we'll definitely have to make it and- still exist. I might be talking about something doesn't exist anymore, but <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know why they would get rid of something like that. I mean, it seems like a COVID safe activity. So it sh- hopefully it didn't shut down over the last <laughs> two years, but um yeah that I'll have to look at that I'll write that down really cool I don't even remember what it's called where it is there's only so many in Delray I'm sure I can find it (laughs) yeah it it's there's probably the only one (laughs) yeah I was gonna say oh that's funny we would take the whole family because my kids they don't care they're just like woohoo big off and my husband yeah. and I are like, oh, look, it's really pretty, like landscaping and all that. I'm like, oh, look, they bring you drinks, even better. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, the best of both worlds. We were talking about how playgrounds should have like breweries attached to them. I, I don't know why they don't. They um, That would be a good idea. Probably not. Uh, if you really well, think about it, it might not be no. the best idea. <laughs> yeah. You're right, but. <laughs> like what kids? I don't have any kids here. In theory, yes, a theory. nice hangout spot, yeah. Yeah. put the car seats in an uber or something <laughs> all right sarah thank you so much for coming on i think you gave everybody some fantastic advice and um I, I think i have to go learn how to golf now with you i you would love it, that you made it sound fun and i'm it, like oh, i don't like that's, golf. that's the goal fun. fun goofy silly goofy, i could do <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely do I can do goofy. <laughs> That's funny. Well, thanks for having me, Bet. This was awesome. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you learned something new. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue improving your tax and financial literacy. Bye.